Hello, hello. This is the awful and awesome entertainment rap. I'm Abbas, and I'm Nenika. And it's a hat trick of episodes uh, being hosted by us. Uh, last time I said jokingly that Rajshree and Abhinandan are like uh, guest hosts of this show, but uh, I guess. Uh, but this is this is not. We are not completely on this episode. Rajshree is a part of this episode, a half of the episode. Uh, she's taken an interview of uh, Hansal Mehta, the director, and Karishma Tanna, which you will be able to hear later on in the episode. But uh, with me today, as usual, uh, is uh, is Nenika and Nenika. We are discussing a brand new web series that came on Amazon Prime and a Netflix film, which yes. I was interested in knowing about your opinions about because it's somewhat similar to the Har, which we uh, discussed last week. Uh, the Prime series is Modern Love Chennai, and the Netflix film is a film called Kathal. Uh, so Nenika, did you get a chance to watch both of them? I did. Yes, I managed to catch both of them. What about you? I did. I was actually very interested in uh, watching Kathal because I saw the trailer and I was very intrigued by it. And uh, Model Love Chennai is something which is a part of an ongoing anthology yes, which which yes. Amazon has been doing with various uh, various cities and various parts of the world. So they've done uh, Modern Love uh, Hyderabad, Mumbai, and I think this is the third one. There are yeah. other international ones like Barcelona, yeah, think, maybe the, or, or there's is, one for New York, definitely. The, I mean, that the, was the original one, yes. Yes, but let's let's start with Kathal because okay. that was a that was a film, <laughs> and uh, it's a Netflix film, and uh, it's directed by a guy called Yashovardhan Mishra, and it starts Sanya Malhotra, uh, Vijay Raz, Rajpal Yadav, Brijendra Kalra, and uh, a lot of familiar faces. Um so Nenika did you get a chance to watch Kathal what did you think of it what, for the, for the second time in a row on the show we're talking about a police department which is headed by a female cop who is from a uh, from a lower strata of the society and trying to fight against the system but this time in a more comedic slash satirical way so what did you think of it I thought it was a cute movie. I think that's the first thing I take away from it. Uh did not take itself seriously. It was a very fun light watch. Like it didn't deter from the subject matter. Like a lot of the themes dealt with are definitely like it's human trafficking, it's you know, caste exploitation, uh you know, sexism faced by women at the workplace, but it still dealt with in like a cutesy manner where it's one of those scenarios mm. like almost like a rom-com like scenario where you know like everything will be resolved in the end. So I don't have to worry. Like the evil characters are not evil evil. They're just like comically evil like a disney villain evil uh so i thought it was it was a very cute movie a lot of slapstick humor but very adorable to watch but that's also because i'm a huge like sanya malhotra fan in general i think she's oh, really? adorable okay. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i also uh, like sanya malhotra but i not the biggest fan of her acting so i was a little okay. concerned whether she'll be able to pull this role off because it requires her to like do an accent and sort of be the Uh, a police officer in a village but uh, yeah I, i think she did quite well she was very she earnest yes. in her uh, performance she yeah. was the accents were quite good everybody like you know sounds like i mean it actually sound like the uh, area shown as very clearly like the eastern belt of up you know sorry western yeah. belt of up and everybody gets yeah, the yeah, language yeah. like entirely right like mm-hmm. uh, my mother's family is from uh, eastern up so you know it sounds like you know i'm just listening to like i've gone back like to visit my grandparents and i'm just listening to all my neighbors speak and this is how they talk like you know people there have a flair for the dramatic all conversation is all hyperbole and you yeah, know just yeah. like taking subtle sly digs at everybody and the language is just so funny cuz you know they'll take every word and twist it in a funny way so that's yeah. what everybody sounded like it was very cute to watch i thought it was a i think like you know one thing i kept saying for the hard like it didn't get the dialogues right it didn't feel mm. like there was um you know like the person writing the script was not necessarily somebody who was intimately aware of the area and the language but this one clearly is written by somebody whose mother tongue is you know the yeah. language that's being spoken and like you can tell the difference it's so stark in somebody writing the script in english and then translating it to it to be it, written yeah, in the language yeah. that it was supposed to be so it was a very cute movie yeah i think the dialogues are also done by uh, the director yashovardhan mishra yes so uh, the plot of the film deals with uh, uh, this politician called uh, played by vijay ras called munna nal munna lal patera who has this uh, really big haveli and he has a garden in his haveli and he sort of grows uh, a, a malaysian breed of kathal <laughs> uncle <a> hong <laughs> uh, uncle uncle tong is it uncle hong uncle hong uh, the uncle hong breed of kathal which is very 
um which is very revered uh-huh. and it's implied that he's using the kathal to curry favors yes. as in as in to get some <laughs> stuff done and uh, two of his glorious cutters get stolen from the tree and the film is about a police department trying to find the cutter and how the how the cutter is related to like a bunch of other things around uh, uh trying to uh, how uh, the cutter puts in motion other things that happen in the film so i also like the film by and large i feel the satire could have been more biting For sure. uh it could have been more um, punchy so nanika have you ever seen uh, jaspal bhatti's flop show i have ca- caught an episode maybe some reruns and they were playing on dd or something but i've not dedicatedly right. watched it what about you so i love flop show when i was a kid i would not understand it as much uh-huh. but i would still enjoy watching it because back then the entire family would used to watch flop show also there were only one channel back then doordarshan but while growing up i fell in love with flop show all over again because the satire in those stories mm-hmm. was so strong and so biting and jaspal bhatti was so good at it um that and and the fact that he wrote all those episodes in the early 90s and they're still as relevant as back then <laughs> uh it just says something about the man and how ahead of his time he was so i thought the premise of this was very similar to a flop show episode mm-hmm. ke politician ke kathal chori ho gaye ab pura police department kathal dhoond raha hai ke kisne churaya hai kya kare and the poli- uh, politician is putting pressure on him and all of that so i think uh, someone like a jaspal bhatti would have escalated the bizarreness of it even more Fair, yeah. that it starts with the cutals being stolen and then he would probably go into a more bizarre territory mm-hmm. whereas what this film does is it subverts that and actually uses the cutal yes. to solve a real problem yes. which which is another similarity to, to the hard yes. in this that the a, a girl gets uh, kidnapped and uh, you know how where whereabouts need to be found what did you think of rajpal yadav i don't see him as much in movies <laughs> anymore but he's wearing a horrendous <laughs> bald cap <laughs> <laughs> yeah he had a terrible wig which i think was installed for like comedic purposes only uh yeah. he was kind of funny like he was a silly character he plays one of those like small town journalists you know that you know a yeah. beat reporters and you know they get to the scene first and sort of cover the local beat and he has like a youtube channel and he's very like addicted to fame and he's just trying to grow his channel uh by trying to you know muddle in with the politicians he is not shown as an evil character see that's the thing like nobody in this movie was evil everyone was just like yeah. kind of bad but overall yeah, pretty yeah, yeah. sweet so in the end also like him his funny wig and everything it just ends up being like a sweet little character uh he did justice to the role i mean you know as he was supposed to uh so i did like him i thought like yeah you're right i don't see him in stuff as much anymore which is sad yeah. because he was really like one of those like he's very good at like physical comedy like was that shahid kapoor movie where he played is like oh, the chup, deaf chup mute guy yeah chup yes. chup ke so <laughs> that is still a master class in like a in like a you know performance in physical comedy where he's just like you know getting into high jinks and this and that so he's really a talent that way like i think he translates to screen very well um, yeah. wasn't used as well in this movie but still he was there he was sweet and charming all the characters in this movie were like sweet <laughs> So I think Netflix should do more stuff like this. I think they just keep chasing the next big thing. I think it's also because it's Sikhya Entertainment, right? Like they've been doing a decent hey. job for the longest time. Uh Sikhya was also the production house that came up with Paglet which is another uh Sanjay right. Malhotra movie Sanya which Malhotra I film, thought correct. was very very good. Um hmm. I'm not sure whether it got its dues or not, but I thought it was a wonderful movie. And the thing about Sanjay Malhotra she holds her own very well in like movies that are you know female centric like she was clearly the lead there's not necessarily she doesn't have to defer to a male lead and she always does a good job she's very capable of holding the screen she's so cute also so yeah I'm a big fan <laughs> and I'm glad that you know she's getting her laurels uh like, within 15 20 years I want to see her do like a bunch of like really interesting projects I hope more work comes her way so yeah yeah Sanjay if you're watching yes uh, <laughs> Nanika has high hopes. Uh, Sanya for watching you in the next. First of all, if you're watching, call Nanika, and then uh, secondly, <laughs> she has high hopes <laughs> from you. Uh, before we move on, I'd like to make an announcement, which is about News Laundry's Press Freedom Fund. Uh, why is press freedom important? How healthy is the Indian media ecosystem? What are the pressures on news organizations? India is on the 161st rank in the Press Freedom Index. So to answer these questions. questions and to celebrate press freedom we have launched a press freedom fund and nl sena project that will include deep dive reports commentaries and videos on press freedom 
the health of the media ecosystem and pressures faced by the civil society and media in India. So help us tell these stories by contributing to the NL Sena project. We plan to top up the fund by May 31st. So let's do this. You can contribute by logging on to www.newslaundry.com slash nl dash sena slash press dash freedom dash fund. I'll repeat that. That's newslaundry.com slash nl dash sena slash press dash freedom dash fund. Okay, now let's move on to the second thing we're discussing today, which is Modern Love Chennai, an anthology series that has premiered on Amazon Prime. Uh, so the six stories are directed and written by uh, different teams of directors and writers. But uh, the whole uh, endeavor was overseen by a filmmaker called Tyagrajan Kumar Raja, who also made uh, the Tamil film Super Deluxe, if you happen to catch it a couple of years ago. Um, so Nanika, did you see the in- anthology and what did you think of it? Just give me uh, like, like your overall feel of it and then we can sort of just go episode by episode and just discuss a little bit about each of them. Sure. Um, so I did catch it. I had like, uh, you know, I binged it at night to make sure that I finished it on time. Uh I thought it was decent. Like romance is already uh, we've talked about it a lot, right? Like romance yeah. is very difficult. Also, I think I think we should mention neither me nor Nanika is from Chennai or speaks exactly, Tamil. So, yeah. so we might not have been able to get the minute nuances, but Correct. we'll give you the general perception of what we got from it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so I thought that the anthology is decently done. Like romance is already a difficult and it's one of those like prestige genres to do. Um, I thought all the movies were sweet, right? Like they maintain the essence of, I suppose, whatever love is supposed to mean to each director. And they serve that purpose decently well. I'm not sure. I think Modern Love Chennai was supposed to have more motives about the city. Like I did mm. see mentions of neighborhoods, etc. And Tamil cinema and how it weaves into people's lives. And um, there were a few shots of the sea, which I think could have played more of an integral part. But I thought it was a yeah. cute series overall. What about you, Abbas? I thought they were all very well done Uh, as in again these are not stories that we see uh, uh, very commonly in Hindi cinema yes Um, the the some of the subject matter of of some of some stories was really unique but across the six I none of them really stood out to me like there wasn't a banger which really was like oh Mm -hmm. my god this blew me away I remember in Modern Love Mumbai, there's a story directed by Vishal Bhardwaj. Mm -hmm. I think it's called Bombay Dragon or Dragon Love or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. It stars Mayang Chang, which was really well done. Like Mm -hmm. it's a one hour uh, film and that really blew me away. Like I watched it multiple times. Uh, There's a song featured in that, which I keep listening to. And I think from in Modern Love Hyderabad also, there was one story which was really, really good. So in this one, across the six of them, they were all good. They were all well done. But I, I, I liked three of them more than the other three. Uh, but overall, I was very mixed on it. Um, so, so yeah, that was my overall take. There's a story number one is about this girl who wants to get married, mm-hmm. and she goes to a, uh, she goes to a, a, a priest who yes. tells, gives her a hint about the future that you will fall in love with a <laughs> North Indian, and he will sweep you off your feet. And then the story sort of, uh, she falls in love with this uh, chart seller <laughs> and then things kind of get twisty and turny. And uh, the the ending is something I did not see it coming. <laughs> it's like a, it's the, the tone of the film is sort of comedic, but yes. it's also, it also has drama. Yes. So I think that this, this, the first story was one of the ones which I sort of liked more mm-hmm. than the others. What did mm-hmm. you think of it? I thought it like, it was very Chennai centric, like, you know, it's uh, all these like the woman that the story is centered around, she works in a biscuit making factory and, you know, she has this other friend of hers who's married, but who clearly keeps telling her that, you know, men, you can't live with them, you can't live without (laughs) them. So, (laughs) uh, just decent advice, I suppose. Uh, So, yeah, and it's a very like, uh, it captures the essence of like, you know, all that like uh, little like... uh, making eyes at the other person that you're interested in and all that like little little nuances of romance and how it like you know budding romance uh decently well done story i did not see the end coming but overall it wasn't (laughs) like out of the world like it was cute and production value was decent the actors were quite cute uh one thing about modern love chennai is they were they got all the most like beautiful looking people to star in it so you know it's full of like i think that was their casting announcement like you have to be like a chennai 10 on 10 to star in this i guess so (laughs) 
Uh, yeah. This is cute. I like Gauri Priya. Like she plays that, you know, that anger of hers. Like she's clearly resentful. She's clearly pissed off at, you know, the world for not making romance easy for her. So she always has that like mini scowl on her face, which it's so cute to watch. So yeah, I thought it was decent. And the last story is the one that's the longest and has created the uh, l- the most buzz. Mm-hmm. And that one is actually directed by Tyag Rajan Kumar yeah. Raja. And uh, it's in a in very simplistic terms, it's like an Indian take on Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yes, where it starts with a couple breaking up, and then the girl finds out a few months later that the boy has had an accident, and he's losing his memory. So the his doctor actually asks her to. So he remembers that they were in a relationship, but he's 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 forgotten that they broke up, and he seems to be losing his memory. So she tries to rekindle and remind him of the. various moments from their relationship and then the story kind of gets very meta and yeah. it's the, it's the most stylish of all the stories but i think at some point i lost the thread of what was happening and it it comes to a point where they're describing things that are happening on screen and mm-hmm. they are sort of uh, foreshadowing what's going to happen and it becomes this thing where the film is commenting on the the film medium is, itself yeah yeah <laughs> so very interesting concept i think it's shot also very beautifully yes. and it stars uh, vamika gabi who was Ooh, uh, yes. in jubilee and also model uh, one of the stories of model of mumbai so i was by th- it started very in a very interesting fashion but by the end i sort of lost interest in it what did you think about it i thought again like it was very stylistic it was very intensely done and it's supposed to captivate like capture two people who are really really in love with yeah. each other it has i think perhaps one of the most interesting love making scenes ever put mm. on in indian <laughs> yeah, cinema yeah it was so awkward to watch <laughs> <laughs> i was just like what the hell and i'm not even a prude in the sense like you know uh, like intimate scenes or whatever shouldn't be they yeah. should 100% be in movies like do what yeah. you want but this one i was just like okay i guess <laughs> Uh I will say Vamika Gabi I mean I always keep saying like every time I see her she's a star and you know she'll go yeah. on to do even better things um yeah, yeah. I'm no, betting no, money on her No no I've taken for granted you have a crush on every uh-huh. every heroine <laughs> <laughs> uh, my reputation is being soiled <laughs> if i had much to begin with rachi sen has interviewed hansal mehta and karishma tanna ahead of the upcoming netflix series titled scoop It's a show about a crime reporter who gets accused of a prominent journalist's murder and then becomes involved inside a nexus of police, media and the Mumbai underworld as she fights for justice. I've seen the trailer, it looks really great. So here's a sneak peek of Rajeshree's interview. The full interview will be available on the News Laundry YouTube channel and also on the full Awful and Awesome Entertainment podcast which will be behind the paywall. Uh, I remember okay. uh, Shahid Azmi's mother came to the huh. shoot, and she saw Rajkumar, and she almost fainted. <laughs> and she said, "My son doesn't look like this. He, he looks like Farzeen Khan." <laughs> you know. <laughs> When I got this role, it was like a dream come true because I've never played a main main protagonist. I s- searched online what exactly had happened, who was this girl who was put behind bars, and all that I did. And then when I uh, met Hansel sir, when I got the script, everything was so beautifully written. I'm like, luckily I mostly choose stories of ordinary people. Yeah. And uh, their ordinariness gives me the chance to interpret the character more freely. And there was a lot of back and forth with Netflix also. It's a funny who, story. Mm. On who, who it should be. And then I suddenly. He kept looking at Harman. He had grown a mustache with this scraggly beard. So I messaged Mukesh in front of Harman that this guy looks right. The breaking down of the character and breaking down of women in a way that you are a strong person and the system is going to try and break you down as much as possible. That I think comes out because you have a lot of women so editors and comes out journalists. Being in that position of power, uh, you are constantly dealing with a moral. and ethical uh, and uh, uh, political dilemma you know it's important to see flaws with empathy the hmm. i don't see flaws uh, with a judgmental eye the judiciary and journal i call them the two j's hmm. judiciary and journalism they are the only two pillars on which an entire system an entire democracy can actually survive you know every time i was going on the set each day i was learning so much 
which is such a good thing for an actor i just manifested and i just left it to god and hansel sir just happened to me <laughs> it's like a blessing which just <laughs> fell in my lap